And so when the principality comes, he looks for those who are prophets. And he begins to, to show them fair ladies. Meanwhile, he would have sent the demons to corrupt the fair ladies. And the fair lady is opening her lap, opening her cleavages. She doesn't know she's a messenger. Because spirit cities are about to be built. And he knows that the prophet is vulnerable to the woman. Because the weakness of the prophet is his eyes. Just as his strength is his eyes. And that's why prophets must win the battle of immorality. <laughs> Prophets must win the battle of immorality in order to bring government. You will see why a prophet can call a name and a phone number, but he has no power in that territory. In fact, himself will be a thief. Himself will be a liar because he doesn't understand that it's a spirit city. It's a spirit city. And so they will send the demons and the demons will enter the women and enter the men. Some of the men will spend hours in the gym. When they build their chest, they now wear singlet. <laughs> I'm showing you something. The ladies who are prophetess, they will be swindled by those men because of their looks. And the men who are prophets, they will be swindled by those women because of their lap and their breasts. What they don't know is that a program is going on. A program. You, you sent a message, you sent him, you, you came somewhere to preach and you connected with the sister, you gave her a word of knowledge and you say, see me later, I need to impart you, it's a lie. Every impartation you want to give her, give her dear now. You didn't hear this, you didn't impart her when you were under the anointing. Is it when the anointing leaves from you, you want to go and impart in the office? It's a program. Now, hear this. Even the lady in question knows that the prophet is liking her. But a demon is already manipulating her. And instead of running, she goes like a sheep. Gullible. And then the same prophet is thinking he's smart. And he collects her number, sends her a message and then arranges to meet her in the hotel. Both of them think they are smart, but they are puppets. They are part of a complex spiritual program that is being manipulated by a principality. A principality is about to win the territory. And you see, in one year, 40 genuine prophets fall. And because they have fallen, the quorum that they are supposed to create in the spirit that principality will now take it and become the owner of that portion of the ecclesia. Every time those prophets minister, they no longer minister from God's frequency. They communicate the energy of that principality. And so the more those prophets preach, the more the principalities will take over. So even innocent believers who hear them will discover a prophet prophesy to them and they start fornicating. And they don't know why. Because the prophet is not speaking the counsel of God. He's emitting the energy of a seductive spirit. And so the principality will continue. He will go to the politician and show him deals where he can make money. And the politician falls to the chain of corruption and begin to steal what he should provide for the people. And you take money from Zambia. See how stupid it is. You take money from Zambia. You go and buy a house in the United States that you visit three times in a year. Even if you are a thief, won't you be wise? Why not build the house in Zambia? The house in the United States, they are taxing you. Taxing you every month, but you still build there. They steal money from here. They go and invest in Dubai. Why not bring the same business to Zambia? But a prince is involved. And that prince uses corruption to create poverty. Because even that poverty is a system. Because the guys who are stealing, they are stealing because of hunger. They are stealing because of frustration. The young ladies who are prostitutes, they are prostitutes because of, of hunger and poverty. So the principality uses the politician who has governmental power to loot money from the country and send the money out of the country, creating a poverty system in the land. And then the young generation who should be the future growing their potential now turn to vices in order to survive at the end of the day a spiritual atmosphere is created so you have those who are fornicators you have those who are liars you have those who are corrupt government officials these are the atmosphere 
that allows the rulers of the darkness to come. Somebody says it's an apostle and he goes somewhere. The moment the power of God is moving, he forces everybody that they must give money. Because he's a merchant. A merchant. He's a thief on the altar. He doesn't know he's creating atmosphere for spirits to take over. When those atmospheres are created, the principalities know that if something is not done quickly, God can send intervention. So they will report back to the rulers of the darkness. The rulers of the darkness will now come. The work they do is to write laws. And so what they will do is to make sure those laws become cultures among men. And so you will know that before you become a government official, you must bribe. If you don't bribe, you can never become. It's a law. A ruler has written that law. The people can tell you, this person is a good man, but he can never become the leader. Because there's a law. If you must become, you must become corrupt. Because that law will make sure. That's what the rulers do. They are magistrates. They are the ones who bound people in captivity for aeons. And so you come to certain family, the grandfather fornicated or went to cheat on his wife. The ruler now make it a law. And so even the father, we have an extramarital affair. The son, we have an extramarital affair. And you see patterns begin to repeat from one generation to another. The principality created it, the ruler made it a law. Now when you continue in that law for a long time, then spiritual wickedness come. That's where HIV appear from. Because those ones, they come to afflict people because you have come to the end of the ladder so that you will meet death and destruction. And so the power we are talking about here is not just a power to prophesy. Names and phone number. It's not just a power to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Those things are good, but we are talking about power that have the ability to reset a civilization. So that when three of you rise, Zambia can be reprogrammed because something will come out of you. This kind of power is a deep order of power. You must travel to the spirit to possess it yourself. Recently, in my country, we just had an election. And for the first time, a righteous man rose. A righteous man. Every time he speaks, he says, go and check my record. And they traced him. There was not one case of bribe. He never took money from anybody. When he left government, he paid everybody. Contractors, workers alike. Everybody paid. They never found anything against him. The whole nation rose as though a revolution was about to begin. But you see, magistrates had written laws that before you become a ruler, you must be corrupt. And he refused to be corrupt. When they saw that the power of God was tearing the hearts of the young people and something was about to begin, the report we got from the observers was that the rigging this time was not by talks, it was systemic. Even INEC was guilty. INEC. And this is not what Nigerians said, this is what observers said that INEC did not follow their own regulation. So they had to use one way or the other, corruption must come in. And when the INEC chairman was doing what was wrong and they asked him, he said, go to court because he knows that the court is compromised. Because this is a law. It will take a kind of power to break it. Miracle service don't affect this one. This one, there are guardians in the spirit who are watching over it. The kind of power we are talking about is the power that brings about national emancipation. This is the kind of power that men like Moses had. It's not just about healing blind eyes. That one man can enter Egypt and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. And one man can bring down a civilization. That kind of power is no longer in the body of Christ. One man. Egypt was the strongest civilization in the world. God didn't send an army. He sent one man. And the man didn't come with battalions. He came with a staff. A staff. He entered Egypt with a staff and delivered people who were in captivity for 400 years. A captivity that is more ancient than himself. The captivity was older than him, but he came with a power that is ancient. With a staff. 
he brought down Egypt. When Moses spoke, his voice was like the voice of God. 